Hi, thank you so much for joining another Lead Squared webinar. I'm your host, Shibani Roy. Uh, some of you may have received an email or two from me, maybe not one, but several. Um, so thank you so much for joining another Lead Squared webinar. Um, this is specific to folks in the finance industry, more specifically for lending businesses. But if you belong to the finance industry, um, you should find some benefit from it. Um, so we're discussing how to build digital processes using automation. And to take us through that session is Anuj Sachdev from Cubera. So I will get to introducing him in a bit. Before that, just a couple of housekeeping points for everyone who's joined the session. Uh, please do ask your questions. There's a question panel on your screen uh, if you have questions please put it there uh, we'll take it up as we go or we may take it up once anuj finishes presenting but we will take it up so don't be disheartened if you don't look at it immediately <laughs> um the next thing is we'll also have a couple of polls for this session so please be enthusiastic and respond to them all you have to do is press a button on your screen so coming back to the topic today, thank you so much again for joining the session. Uh, we're discussing how to build digital processes using automation. So our speaker today is Anut Sachdev from Cubera. Cubera helps you get access to personal loans digitally. So that's great. I also happen to see a, a very special post on LinkedIn today, Anuj, about a recent milestone you crossed. So I'd like you to share a few lines on that. And of course, tell us a bit about yourself. Sure. Thanks, Shabani. So thanks, guys, for joining. And thanks, Shabani, for arranging this. And thanks for being so patient with me while scheduling it. Um, so guys, uh, thanks a lot for joining. And uh, as Shibani mentioned, uh, I am doing a startup called Cubera. Uh, we are a managed marketplace for personal loans. Uh, and we try to provide loans for to people who are currently underserved by the incumbents. Uh, so typically, we try to focus on uh, near prime customers, uh, folks who are sitting between a prime customer, uh, you know, borrower profile and a subprime uh, borrower profile. And uh, as Shibani just mentioned, uh, uh, we hit a you know, first very special milestone yesterday. Uh, we disbursed, uh, you know, we've disbursed a total of uh, 100 crores uh, since the time we launched in January 2017. So, you know, it's taken us 24 months to do that. Uh, but now the plan is to um, disburse 100 crores worth of loans every single month uh, very soon. So the first 24 months were spent um, figuring out the space and figuring out the product and understanding our customers. And now I think we are in a ramp up phase. Um, so that's about uh, me and my company, Kubera. Um, so the reason why you know we chose automation to um, uh, do a webinar about it was because at Kubera, we um, use the automation feature of Lead Squared uh, pretty heavily. Um, and it helps us in doing a lot of things. And while Shibani and I were uh, discussing about the title of this webinar, we sort of said that, you know, let's call it uh, building digital processes uh, using automation for lending businesses and uh, lending platforms. But, uh, you know, I've gone through the list of attendees and I can see that a lot of you guys are from the lending background, but uh, there are a lot of people from, let's say, insurance, securities, capital markets, um, investment banking uh, fields as well. So what I'll do is I'll try to uh, keep this webinar a little uh, generic. And uh, whatever use cases I show here, uh, I hope that by, you know, by the end of the webinar, you are able to um, extrapolate them to your own specific individual use cases of your own company and your own industry. So although you know this is about lending, but you know I'll try to keep it uh, as generic as possible while showing you, showing you some of our uh, use cases, and um, you know, I'll cover some of the basics of uh, Lead Squared uh, before we dive into uh, the deep end, and uh, I'll try my best to uh, uh, wrap it up uh, you know as early as possible and hopefully uh, give some time back to you guys so that you guys can go and do whatever you're doing. Uh, just running your own business. Um, you can keep submitting questions um, as we go along, and if the question is relevant, as, you know, as Shibani mentioned, I'll take them up. And if it is, if the question is relevant for the larger audience as well, again, I'll pick it up. 
and in case uh, you know the questions are not relevant uh, or linked to the topic of discussion then you know i'll try to take them up uh, at the end of the session um but uh, before we proceed um uh, let's do a quick poll uh, to know a little more about uh, all the people who are currently online um that will help us uh, set the you know direction of the webinar um so jabani over to you for the first poll sure anuj um so guys like i mentioned earlier all you have to do is pick the option most relevant to you please do participate it will help us understand the audience better today um so the questions on your screen what is your role in your company are you in a marketing role product role sales operations customer service if there is a role that applies to you that isn't on the on your screen right now you know the chat panel just let us know over there what your role is in your company again is it marketing product sales operations or customer service 81% of the audience have already voted so i'll just get to the results now 35% say marketing 47% say product now it's gone up to 50 33% say sales, 39% say operations, and another 39% say customer service. Sure, thanks, Shabani. Um, so I guess uh, you know when I was going through the list of attendees, there were a lot of uh, marketing managers, um, but I can see that here the poll suggests that there are a lot of fraud guys as well, which is great. So what I'll do is um, um, you know we'll break the session down into. Um, let me just present this. You know, we'll break the presentation down into uh, two broad parts. Uh, one would be regarding marketing automation, and the other would be regarding process automation. Um, because uh, I think these are the two main use cases that you can really use Lead Squares automation feature to solve for. Um, and uh, so, I think the next step, you know, would be uh, let me just show you um, the basics of automation in Lead Square. So in case uh, you know you guys can design uh, flowcharts, then you can very easily use uh, you know, automations on Lead Square. So if you were to um, go to let's say a flowchart designing tool like Lucid Charts, um, and you make process flows in your day-to-day -day lives, um, then and if you like that process, which is very easy, um, then you can sort of create automations on leadsword as well so it is as simple as um, you know creating a flow chart on a tool like lucid charts so let me give you a you know birds eye view of an automation which is currently running in my company um, to just give you a sense of how things look um, when they are implemented so don't worry if you're overwhelmed by the things that you see on the screen right now um, this is specific to my company so you know most of you won't be able to understand it, but this is just to show you how automations um, look in Lead Square. And they're nothing but uh, flowcharts. So if you can design a flowchart, um, think of automations as a flowchart that is uh, that can be programmed and will run itself. Right. Um, before we move any further, let me just take a quick poll because this is important uh, in case a lot of you haven't used lead squared then i'll have to spend some time in going into you know what fields and activities mean in the context of uh, lead squared so shivani let's just run the second poll um, to figure out if people here know about lead squared uh, fields and activities sure anuj um, again the questions on your screen just pick the option uh, that's relevant to you are you aware of lead squared fields and activities um, those who are lead squared customers would should be aware of it i would say uh, but let's see what you think um yes or no just pick the option about 80 percent say no and 20 percent say yes got it so i think what i'll do is i'll spend the next uh, few minutes uh, going over what fields and activities mean in the context of lead square because until you know that uh, you won't really understand uh, the live demos that i'll do so let me quickly uh, you know, in case you've ever seen uh, Lead Square's dashboard, this is what it looks like. You know, this is the settings uh, dashboard on Lead Square. So a field is basically um, a place where you can store data. So right, let's say you want to store PAN number or Aadhaar number, mobile number, email ID, and so on, right? So you can define fields in Lead Square, and you can define um, the 
properties of that field as well. So for example, if I want to uh, create a field called, um, let's say, PAN number, right? I can figure out where I want to show that field in my dashboard on various application forms that I may have. And then I can choose uh, you know, the kind of the, the format of the field. So in this case, let's say it'll be text because PAN number has what text and number. So I'll select text and I can select the maximum length and so on and so forth. So basically, any data that you want to store in Lead Square, you first have to go and define the field and its schema, right? Um, so that's as far as fields are concerned. Um, activities is, uh, you know, again, something, uh, let's say you want to perform some action on a lead. Um, so let's say you want to um, generate a loan agreement, right? So generate loan agreement would probably be one activity in your list of activities. And you can have you know tens and hundreds of activities in your system depending on your own use cases. Um, so for example, uh, let me just show you how to create an activity. So let's say this activity is called test activity create a loan agreement. Right, I can select a few properties here that I want to show this uh, activity in my leads activity list. Whether I want to allow attachments or not, let's say I want to allow attachments. I don't want uh, pre-data activities, so no user should be able to put this activity uh, in a pre-data fashion, um, and so on, right? When I go next, here I can set the form of the activity. So when a user is adding an activity, uh, or when a system is add adding an activity using the Lead Squared APIs, uh, you can pass certain custom parameters as well. So let's say in this particular activity, I want to pass, um, let's say, loan application number, right? Or whatever, it could be anything. Um, if this was a verification related activity, field verification related activity, I could have you know, passed two parameters called home verification or office verification. And I can select certain drop downs for that particular custom field within the activity. Right, so I can just type out whatever I require here, and that will um, become part of the activity itself. Right, so let me do one thing. Let me quickly um, take you to sample lead and show you how this will look. Right, so here I can select test. This was the test activity. And I can, so this was loan application number was, um, you know, the custom field that I added to the activity. So it comes here on the form itself, right? And home verification was the second one, which is already there, right? And I added e agreement to the drop down, so you can see it here. So essentially, you know, activities are just actions that you want to perform on your lead. And overall, when you're creating uh, processes, um, you know, it would be, I mean, you'll only be using custom fees and custom activities uh, because those form the, you know, building blocks of any automation. Um, so let me do one thing. Uh, let me start with uh, by building an automation for a marketing use case. Um, and then I'll probably go into uh, creating an automation for, uh, um, you know, a process use case, right? So I have a sample um, automation ready here, um, but I'll again do the same thing and show you how easy it is to build automations. Just a second. All right, so let's say I want to start an automation, a marketing automation, where I want to trigger a certain uh, emails and SMSs to the leads who have dropped off in my application funnel or in your you know, product funnel. Right? So somebody may be applying for an insurance policy or an insurance product and the guy has done, let's say some OTP verification on the site and didn't complete the rest of the process. So you can define it um, within your uh, uh, automations dashboard of lead squared. Let me start all, all over again. So let's say a new lead has come in, right? And 
you want to wait for some time let's say you wait for five minutes and you check the status of the lead right so then you put an if else condition and you select lead stage and let's say lead stage is lead created right so basically we are saying that somebody has come into your funnel and you've waited for five minutes and the guy is still in a lead created stage. He has not moved further and lead created stage is your base stage in the funnel. So then what you can do is you can trigger emails and SMSs, right? So if you see these options here, um, if you go down to messaging, you will have options like send email and SMS, right? So you can select send email and then you can go to the text editor and you know, put your HTML uh, right here and that email template will go um, to all the leads whenever this automation runs, right? So you can define certain mail merge fields as well. So for example, in the subject line, you want to show, uh, let's say application number, right? So let me do that here. Application number, this is the mail merge tag of application number. So you can just put it here in the subject line and every time an email goes, it will go with the lead specific uh, application number, right? And there'll be many more uh, fields you know, in your process. So you can mail merge all those fields within the email itself. Um, similarly, you can send out an SMS along with that, right? So you can select any template that you may have pre-configured. And let's say complete alone application, blah, blah, blah. And the SMS is configured, right? So these are, you know, and on top of this, let's say you want to do some A-B testing. So that's also possible. Um, you know, there's a feature called uh, split test here. And you can define various A-B testing uh, processes as well. I won't go uh, into that right now because then, you know, that that's a separate topic altogether. Uh, but from a marketing perspective, um, I think these are two, three important uh, use cases uh, of uh, automation in lead squared to trigger emails basis certain events um, or let's say uh, triggers or start a drip marketing campaign um, right so that's as far as marketing is concerned um, then let's come to process related automations and you know i've noticed i've worked with uh, several financial institutions uh, and i've noticed that um, a lot of financial institutions struggle in uh, you know creating efficient processes and once a process is created they are not flexible or you know agile enough to be updated easily so lead squared for us at kubera is solving a major workflow management problem and in case you have a problem of creating workflows on the fly and being extremely flexible and agile um, then using automations can really solve that so let me just go to another uh, draft uh, automation, right? So let's say I want to um, set up an activity. I want to start the automation from uh, the trigger of an activity being added. So let's say a new activity on lead is added. And let's say I want to trigger the automation when an activity called uh, generate e-agreement is added, right? So basically, this automation will run whenever generate e-agreement activity is added to a lead, right? And then you can do various things. And one of my favorite uh, features in Lead Square is that you can uh, call third party or post data to third party um, services. So for example, you may have a service, let's say you have a tech team and you have built a web service, which is capable of pulling data from lead squared and creating whatever needs to be created for the, so for example in this case uh, you want to generate an e-agreement so your process will run outside of lead square to generate the lead agreement uh, e-agreement and you'll get posted in lead square so basically that gets done using a function called webhooks right so let's say i configure a webhook here let's say i call it google.com here for example generate e-agreement process webhook. 
right? So right now it won't be allowed. It, it won't be allowed because Google.com won't allow you to post data to them. But let's say you have a web service running, uh, so you can put your webhook URL here, and every time the automation runs, um, the automation will send data to your own service, which is sitting outside of Lead Square, and then you can do various things with that, right? So for example, um, let's say I want to run Sybil, right? I want to pull somebody's Sybil report. So I can show you that as well here somewhere. One second. So this is just an example. You know, we partner with Fullerton. And let's say I want to pull somebody's uh, Sybil report using Fullerton's uh, Sybil ID, then I can just add an activity called full, uh, pull Fullerton Sybil, and that automation will post data to my external webhook, which I've configured. And that webhook is capable of um, you know, getting data and then processing whatever needs to be processed. So I, I saw that you know, a lot of folks here are from the prod background. So let me just show you how that payload looks like. right? So if an activity is added, of, let's say, Pull Sybil, and then that automation is triggering the payload to a webhook. So this is how uh, the format looks like of the data that goes to your own service, right? And then depending on what you've received from Lead Squared, you can run various processes, uh, you know, run various codes, and then update Lead Squared uh, with whatever data you want to update, right? You by calling Lead Squared APIs. Another very useful thing here is that again, it is linked to the webhooks function. So let's say I have defined an automation here which says that whenever I add an activity called pull Fullerton Civil, you need to send this data uh, or you know, send the payload to a certain webhook URL, which is this URL that I've configured, then I can essentially invoke uh, the Sybil function anywhere in my workflow, anytime I want, right? So I, let's say I want to create another workflow. Um, let me just go here. So let's say I have this workflow running. It could be any workflow. And I want to call, I want to pull a person's Fullerton symbol, let's say, right? So I go here and add an activity which says pull symbol, right? Now I am basically using this block anywhere in an automation, in any automation, because in the background there's another automation running. Um, which is taking care of sending data to my external service. So I hope I'm, I'm making myself clear here. Basically, you can build once and deploy multiple times in multiple ways in different workflows as you go along building your processes. So this is a feature that I really like uh, because otherwise, you know, every time you create a process and every time you have to define uh, every aspect of that process. So here I have defined it once that if an activity called pull civil is added, uh, then data needs to go to this webhook URL. And then I can invoke this activity anywhere in any automation without worrying about uh, the data going to my external service or not. So that's a very useful uh, uh, use case of um, lead square automations. Now I think uh, what I'll do is I will spend some time just going over um, uh, some of the automations that we have, and that'll give you an idea of what all you can achieve, right? Uh, and as I said, you can sort of extrapolate these use cases to your own internal company use cases. It's very difficult for me to cover all the use cases of different industries, but I can definitely show you some uh, automations uh, which can give you some uh, an idea of how things work. Uh, right, Anand, so just, yeah. um, just before you move on, um, I just have some questions from Rohit. Uh, you'll also be able to see them in the questions tab. Um, so one was about, uh, yeah, it's about the Sybil reports. He says, how many Sybil reports can be run in a day? Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, he says, uh, how many Sybil reports can be run in a day? Well, Rohit, that entirely depends on your own services, right? So Lead Squared is not providing a Sybil pool service. You should integrate with Sybil, you know, outside of Lead Squared. And then you should provide a webhook URL to which Lead Square should post data whenever you want to pull a Sybil report. So 
the answer to that your question is uh, n number of reports right because that's entirely dependent on your external process that you put in place right so you would have an api integration with let's say sibyl and that particular piece of code would receive data from lead square about a lead that's all lead square will send right that this is the lead and this is the activity code so basically lead square is telling your own uh, system that you need to pull sibyl for this particular lead so data comes from lead squared but then it is your external service which is responsible for uh, pulling sibyl and they can be n number of uh, such requests okay thank you um there's an another question from sanket but maybe i think sanket uh, anuj would be talking about all of it through the session so his question basically is if you could give a background of what all purposes kubera is using lead squared for that would be great so um yeah sure i quickly uh, take that question so sure. you know we use lead squared uh, across the funnel right so right at the top uh, let's say that uh, we have certain loan agents and loan aggregators who are part who are partners for punching leads so we have given them lead squared access uh, on the dashboard of lead squared as well as api access so if it's a large aggregator it can uh, punch leads into our lead squared account using apis or you know manually upload or uh, type out leads in the dashboard and as soon as the lead comes from um, you know various aggregators and dss for example uh we have put in a process again in which we are you know posting data to our external service uh which basically runs an ivr and uh, smss to the lead to ask that uh, if you have really sent us a, you know submitted an application through such and such aggregator uh, then press 1 uh, to get a loan offer from kubera right so those are some of the processes that have, that we built for the offline sales team um similarly um we have processes running for various lenders that we have on our platform as i mentioned you know we operate a managed marketplace uh, so we have uh, two three large lenders on the platform and all the interfacing that happens uh, with our lenders um, you know in some cases uh, happen through lead square and at the same time we have integrated lead square with our own lending services which you know uh, some of you would, would know called you know loan origination services and systems so we've integrated our uh, los uh, with lead squared so everything that happens on our los gets reflected uh, or mirrored into lead squared so that's another use case and uh, then you know there are use cases of um, let's say field investigation or field verification um because we give some very, you know very large ticket loans we go up to 15 lakhs in some cases we may have to uh, do a field verification of a lead and in that case again we have built the interface uh, with our verification agency through lead square so again what happens there is and i can show you through an automation which i was just about to show earlier um right so whenever a user adds an activity this is a custom activity that we have defined in our system that kyc documents have been received please start verification then we do various checks uh, in the funnel uh, and as you can see it's quite an extensive uh, workflow but it was very easy for me to design this because the automation feature is quite user friendly and as i mentioned if you can make uh, a flow chart on a tool like lucid charts or any other charting uh, tool you can easily use it on uh, lead squared right because it's just uh, adding if else conditions or various options that lead squared provides so in this case you know the lead goes through various validations so in this case payroll company verification was not required right then the automation checks that other address fields are there or not right it's a final check before we ask a verification agency to go out on the field and start verification and after all the verification you know validations are met um then we at the end at the bottom here we add an activity called send combined verification request right and this activity is part of another automation in which i am triggering a uh, data to a webhook which is our internal webhook um to get the lead details as well as um the activity code to figure out that okay for this particular lead i need to initiate a verification request and then from that point onwards um whatever happens happens outside of lead square you know we have our own services running um and the service basically makes an api call to our verification agency 
and creates an order for, let's say, home verification or office verification and gets a response uh, back, let's say, uh, with the order ID or the air vehicle number or whatever. And all those details are then again updated into Lead Squared uh, by calling Lead Squared's APIs. So it's really, you know, in order to really make use of Lead Squared automations, you've got to explore and play around with uh, the concept of webhooks. Uh, because with that, if you have a tech team, you can really create a lot of um, processes outside of Lead Squared while taking care of your workflow management issues on Lead Squared, right? So your coder, your developer would um, do an integration once with, let's say, a, a Sybil or Experian or any other credit bureau or a verification agency, uh, right? And that integration is done once, and that integration can be invoked multiple times at multiple places using various automations. So as a product owner, you may have to design processes on the floor, right? We are a startup. Um, we, you know, do things really on the fly because we are always uh, updating things, learning from the market and improving our processes. So if today somebody comes up to me right now and says that, hey, I want a civil pool capability or I want a verification request capability to be added uh, when the lead uh, when a field in the lead updates from X to Y, I can do that very quickly, right? I don't have to code anything because I have taken care of all the third party integrations using webhooks in a different automation, right? Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, Shivani, do we have any more questions? We do have two more. Um, Anuj, so just let me know if you want to take them now or later. So one is by Giri, and he says he's talking about data. And he says, uh, is the data stored in data layer by lead squared? Because some data of the leads are not shareable to anyone like bank details, PAN number, Aadhaar number, mobile number, etc. Right. So in this case, you know, you can choose to have a dedicated AWS account, right? You can host all the data in your own AWS account. Um, so by default, when you start up with lead squared, you'll be put on a multi-tenant shared account. Um, and then you can really control the kind of uh, data fields that can be accessed by anybody, right? So you can define whenever you create a new field, there are permission templates that you can define in your dashboard. So let's say that you've created a new field called bank account number and IFSC code, and you don't want XYZ user uh, to be able to see or retrieve this uh, these particular fields, um, you can give permission according to that, according to that, right? Um, and I can probably show you the permission template to make it more clear in case you're not um, used to um, lead squared uh, dashboards. Let me give a second. Right, so there's something called as permission templates in each squared. And every time, so let's say that, uh, let me open a sales permission template. It was defined by, you know, different groups. So for example, let's say that you don't want to um, give access to create any uh, lead, you can do that. Or let's say you want to give access to, you don't want to give access to view all the leads, you can do that as well, right? You can just change here, you can configure, and you can select which fields should be uh, given access, right? So those things you can control using uh, one, you know, you can store the data on your on AWS account. And second is you can uh, control access on fields, on activities via permission templates. So I think Shivani, let's keep on going uh, with these questions because I think this is the best use of our time right now. Uh, and then I'll probably end up with uh, a few more automations. Sure. Um, so next questions from Tanvir and he says, how are you doing KYC, uh, especially after Aadhaar based KYC was abolished? Right. So, you know, this is not uh, relevant to Lead Squared, but, uh, you know, we are doing offline KYC as everybody else in the industry is doing. People are uh, exploring various other methods of KYC uh, using Aadhaar as well. Uh, but to answer your questions, uh, you know, as everybody is doing in the industry, we are doing an offline KYC. 
because Aadhaar is, uh, as you know, is not uh, allowing access to its uh, database. Okay, um, Saket has a follow-up question now. So he says, um, do you think some of these processes are part of LOS and how would you differentiate from lead management system perspective? Right, that's a very good question. So you're right, you have to you know, clearly define the role of an LOS and the ro role of a lead management system. The role of the LOS would be to, let's say, um, do scoring, right? If you have a scorecard-based approach, um, you need to score various applicants who are coming into your funnel. So that's a you know, hardcore LOS function. But what you can do with your lead management system is that you can take care of a lot of workflows that you may want to, to build, right, to support your processes. So, and it is there that Lead Square really helps. Otherwise, you know, you can't really build an LOS on top of Lead Square right away. You'll have to integrate your LOS with the lead management system. That's what we've done, right? The leads, it's always a mirror between our lead management system and the LOS. Um, and the lead management system is all about taking care of different workflows, right? Or interfacing with third parties. So I don't expose my LOS to a verification agency. I don't expose my LOS to um, a call center, for example, right? If I want to send data to my call center, um, it goes through a, through an automation via Lead Square, right? What happens is in Lead Square, the lead owner changes of, uh, of the lead. It gets assigned to my call center. At the same time, my call center has given me a webhook URL, right? To which, uh, using the automation, I post data to the um, uh, to the call center, and the call center does uh, the calling, or, you know, at various intervals, and then gives me a feedback back into uh, Lead Squared by using Lead Squared's APIs. So those are the use cases for which the lead management system would be of great help. Uh, but as far as core LOS functions are concerned it's best to keep outside of the lead management system. Right. Um, Devendra has a question again about data. Um, he, he may have just joined in. So he says, where does Lead Squared save clients data on which public cloud server? Right. So it is stored on AWS. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can opt to have your own dedicated AWS account on which this can be hosted. Uh, by default, Lead Squared starts with a multi-tenant shared uh, AWS account, uh, but you can request and transition to a dedicated account if uh, that's your uh, that's your company's need. All right, okay. Um, I don't see any more questions coming in as of now, so maybe we could look at a few more automations. Oh, okay, uh, we, we've got another question. It's from Giri. He says, can we push the notifications from time to time period? Um, if, you, if you mean by notifications, emails and SMSs, then yes. So for example, um, let me show you something. Um, just a second. So what I'll do is I'll show you an automation which runs in our case uh, to get the customer's bank statements, right? In that case, um, sorry, it's just loading. So just give me a second. Right, so in this case, uh, you know, this information that banking is spending is coming from our LOS, right? Because there's a very tight integration between our uh, LOS and uh, Lead Squad account. So the information comes from the LOS and says that, you know, banking is pending so the automation after a defined period of time after four minutes checks again that if the banking is still pending right we haven't received the bank statement to be able to process the loan application right then it sends out an email which looks something like this at the same time it sends an sms right and then it waits for three hours and it does the same thing again right so we have various time-based uh, intervals defined uh, when we send various notifications via emails and SMSs. Right, Shivani, do we have any more questions? Okay, um, yeah, we do have one from Devendra, and he says, do we as clients need to sign up with third party for services, 
or will lead square do it on our behalf i also am told uh, i just see that nilesh has also joined the session anuj um so um nilesh are you there yep hi anuj hi hi nilesh yeah uh, i was uh, tied up with something i could join earlier hi everyone so i can answer that question um anuj you want to take a first shot at it sure so you know as far as uh, i mean there are a lot of third party integrations that lead squared has already built in right so for example take for uh, take for example telephony solutions uh, you may be using nullarity in your uh, system or you may be using some other uh, solution let's say amio so these are certain pre configured uh, you know third party integrations that lead squared already has but in case lead squared doesn't have those integrations you can talk to them um, so for example uh, you know as far as civil risk concerned Uh, you know we have a direct pipe with civil right that's not something uh, that is part of the standard integrations of lead squared um so nilesh do you want to add to that yeah so i think the other part uh, the first part uh, you covered the second part could be you know the customer who is uh, you know uh, taking lead squared they may want to uh, you know seek help in implementation uh, or you know, configuring automations to match to their process needs and stuff like that so to that extent uh, you know we take that ownership of that uh, if that is part of our uh, you know uh, agreement with the customer uh, however there are third parties as well who are offering uh, you know uh, additional services on top of lead squared for example um, if it's a marketing use case then you know designing of a landing page or you know designing of an email campaign and those kind of things or also uh, doing third party uh, services for integration uh, as which you mentioned right um, like civil and there are uh, because lead squared is a fairly uh, you know open interface uh, you know from an api standpoint so it is uh, a lot easier to build tools around uh, lead squared from an integration standpoint so so there are you know either developers in the uh, in house staff of companies who are doing this today or uh, they uh, contract it out with other uh, it companies and uh, and they are basically offering those services to them hopefully that answers the question Yeah so Devendra do let us know um there is another question uh from Saurabh and he says is this a rule engine integrating with existing systems or a complete LOS Right Saurabh so this is not an LOS which I'm what I'm showing to you right now uh, as i said that our LOS sits outside of lead squared and the rule engine and the scoring engine is you know part of that LOS what we've done is that we have integrated lead squared with our los so that all the data that is there in the los always reflect in lead squared and using that data we can run various workflows right so uh, as far as scoring engine is concerned it is sitting outside of uh, lead squared but it was very easily integrated um by lead squared's team in the initial setup so whenever you you know sign up with lead squared uh, the solution uh, you know architects and engineers would sit with you would sit with you and figure out uh, what sort of integrations need to be built uh, with services that you own or with services with third party services that you don't own at the same time they will handhold you to figure out some automations to run on the data that's coming in from any third party source it could be your source or some other um, you, you know vendor all right um then saket here's another question um he says what all los are out there in the market lead squared has integration with so i think the relation take this question yeah so i think uh, so we work with the uh, so we have worked with about 15 uh, you know lending businesses and each of them have different los i think uh, and uh, there is no out of the box integration with anyone um, all of these integrations have been created by either the customers or the third parties uh, to offer services to the customer so nucleus i think we have one uh, one implementation there uh, newgen we have uh, one i think in case of anuj uh, it's a custom uh, los and that's true for several others then there is a integration we have with kuliza in uh, one of the uh, one or two places so i think these three four uh, comes to me uh, you know immediately um, you know others um, some of those i mean a lot of the new age companies have their own los built in so their developers are doing those integrations today all right we have we had a whole bunch of questions one after the other so i don't see anything at the moment anuj all right perfect so i think that was important because uh, 
you know a people have a lot of questions about uh, various integrations so i think it was helpful to answer that and uh, secondly you know because a lot of people have not used lead squared so it may be a little difficult to show actually how automations are built but what i've tried to do here is that just show it to you that it is very easy to build any process because as i said you know it's very difficult for financial institutions or for any company to build processes and in the case of financial institutions we've seen that people really struggle so that's something that you can really solve uh, using lead squared and there are various things that you can do within the automation right you can send an sms you can send an email you can update the lead so for example your call center person is on a call and uh, the call and the person gives some additional detail which is not already captured in the system right so you can define an activity that if you're on a call and you want to capture some data here is a field capture it there and gets auto added to to the lead right um similarly you can tag leads to basically classify them into different clusters and using automations and so on so there are, there are lot, you know a lot of things that you can do and uh, it won't be possible for us to uh, go through them uh, go through all of them right now but i hope i have given a decent flavor of what all can be done and the most important feature as i told you earlier is that you can build third party integrations very easily right so as i said you know i built the verification agency integration once outside of lead square and every time i want to send an order to my verification agency i just add an activity which triggers a webhook which is my own webhook and the data gets posted and you know the processes start externally in my own uh, services and the verification order is created for example right so these are certain very uh, you know good use cases of lead squares automation um so i think shubhani i don't have anything more to add right now in case we don't have any more questions uh, i think we can wrap up sure anuj uh, thank you so much so those of you who joined in late uh, let me just just heard anuj sachdev talk he's the vp product of cubera uh, he was helped by nilesh who took up some of the questions that came in more recently nilesh is the co-founder and ceo of lead squared so thank you gentlemen thank you so much for taking the time uh, i don't see any more questions so we will wrap up if anything further comes up uh, anuj i shall definitely get in touch with you via email uh, also some of you have been asking me for the recording and deck that will be sent to you as well uh, so thank you so much uh, nilesh if you have any final thoughts on how to build processes for lending businesses yeah no, thank you anuj first of all uh, for uh, coming out and doing the session for all our audience really appreciate uh, you know sharing the uh, Uh, the information freely with with folks out here, and I think uh, you know to to all of you, please uh, you know if you have uh, not looked at Lead Squared, do give it a try. Um, you know, building processes as Anuj said, uh, I won't say it's a piece of cake, but it makes uh, life a lot easier uh, with Lead Squared, and uh, you know you'll have all the support we offer uh, to uh, to get you up and running uh, for your businesses. So thank you so much for joining today. Okay thank you so much guys um I'll see you next time for the next webinar do join us for that take care have a lovely weekend bye bye